And I have my handy dandy card in case I have a brain fart, which I probably will. So I'm here because my daughter was injured by the Pfizer vaccine 382 days ago. Um, but before I get into our journey, which was pretty incredible, I would like you to get to know her a little bit. Maddie, since the day she was born, has been an overachiever. When she was about eight years old, she told us that she was going to be a doctor or a scientist. I believed her. That same year, her older sister graduated high school. And in the stand, or in the, on the graduating field, she saw that there were two different colored gowns. Some people were wearing white, and some were wearing burgundy. She asked me, why are they wearing white? And I told her, because those kids have the best grades, and they're graduating top of the class. And she said, Mama, that's going to be me. And I did not doubt it, for sure. That conversation kept up all through grade school and middle school. High school came along. Maddie's sport of choice, volunteering. She volunteered at the soup kitchen in Costa Mesa, not too far from us, nearly every weekend. And if she wasn't doing that, she was tutoring uh, grade school and middle schoolers. She was an overachiever with a heart. When she graduated, she wore that white gown, well over 4.0, applied to 17 universities and got into nearly every single one. Definitely an overachiever, and she made what she was going to do. She chose Chapman University, which isn't too far from home. I was pretty happy about that one. Um, she chose it because Keck had donated a new science building. It was opening her freshman year of college, and so for a kid who's wanted to be a scientist or a doctor since she was little, you couldn't have picked a better place, right? This has got the best of technology, the best of everything she could get her hands on to get started in her future career of being a doctor. She started college with a degree, and I have to read it because I always screw it up. Biological sciences with an emphasis in human anatomy and physiology. Got it right, Maddie. She'll be very happy for me. She um, did amazing in college, of course. Second year of college, she said, hey, mama, there's this program. It's called Cope Health Scholars. And with this program, it allows me to have a curriculum-based ability to volunteer in our local hospital. The benefit is that I will get a hands-on, more nitty-gritty, dirty, you know, get in there and be able to go to every single floor in the hospital, really understand all the different types of doctors there are so I can choose which one I want to be. So of course I paid for that, and of course she flew through with flying colors, and she started her rounds in the pulmonary unit. That was March 2020, and COVID had set in. And I don't know if you remember, but there was a gentleman who was flown here from Aruba. He had COVID. He ended up going to the St. Joseph Hospital, to the pulmonary unit, to the floor she was at, and the room she was in. She was exposed. She ended up quarantining. Quarantining, is that a word? She was in quarantine for 14 days over her 20th birthday. She did not complain once because she was doing the right thing. She was protecting our family. Maddie always tries to do the right thing. That's a common theme tonight. Because all the kids were homeschooled now, most expensive homeschool I've ever paid for. I think we could all agree on that one if we have college students at home. But there was nothing else to do but volunteer. And guess what? All of the volunteers were let go except for Cope Health Scholars. So my daughter got to get her clinical um, hours during the pandemic. So she got to experience things nobody else was getting the chance to do. Again, so excited, you would not even believe the stories that she used to come home with. During that time, she ended up on the labor and delivery floor and fell in love with neonatal, mamas and babies, came home and told me, that's where I'm going to be. That's who I want to be with. I want to help the babies and the mamas. She found her passion. She was so excited in December when she found out that there was gonna be a vaccine and that she and the rest of the Cope Health Scholars were to get the chance to be vaccinated along with the, the people she'd been volunteering next to. I couldn't have talked her out of it if I tried because she thought she was towing the line, pulling her weight, doing everything that she should be doing, protecting all of us. 
protecting us at home and protecting all of you. And afterwards, she did have some adverse reactions, but they were the same things that you look up on the computer and it was like nausea, fatigue, a little bit more than most people, but Maddie, she's an overachiever, so it's no big surprise that it's a little more than most people. <laughs> Par for the course. And then that went away, so we wrote it off. Until things started getting really weird. And she started getting a pain in her hand that we couldn't explain because she didn't do anything to hurt it. But maybe, maybe she did injure it. And that pain started going up her arm and her hand became a little bit numb. And the pain became so bad that she would text me or call me every single night for weeks saying she could not sleep. So we got her into an orthopedist. That orthopedist sent us off to get MRIs and other tests and finally to a nerve study specialist to get a nerve conduction study. If you don't know what that is, that's to see if there's any blockage in your nerves to find out where the pain is coming from, where they need to fix, if it needs to be surgery. The nerve conduction, the specialist, she was doing these little exercises, you know, doing this, you know, pushing her feet up and down, watching her feet fall over and over. And under her breath, she said, this is bullshit. And then she stood up and she looked Maddie and I dead in the eye and she said, your problem is not the pain in your arm. The test they sent you here for is bullshit. Last time I heard a doctor say that, my ex-husband had emergency surgery to save his life. So I knew something was fucking wrong. Excuse my language, this makes me spicy. Just a titch. Anyway, the drive home sucked. As you can imagine, we went to the darkest place I've ever been. The next day, Maddie's knees were numb, her feet were numb, and she couldn't bend her feet anymore. She thought maybe the doctor freaked her out, but by evening, it was actually happening and she could barely walk. We ended up in an emergency room because we didn't know what the hell was going on. We had some tests, we had a CAT scan, and everything came back clear. The next day, he says, you, there's an appointment waiting for you at the neurologist. We want you to go in and see what's going on. We went to the neurologist. Within five minutes of him talking to her and doing the reflexes, the feet drop thing, I don't know what any of those are called. He says, I think you have MS. If you can imagine my daughter's face, and also that she's pre-med, so she had an idea what that meant, our world stopped that moment. That drive home sucked. The next day, we ended up at ER because, let me back it up. That night, the symptoms grew, where the numbness went up her front and down her back. My middle daughter was home and she told me, Mama, you need to go to sleep, because I hadn't slept in days. I'm going to sleep with Maddie and I will keep my hand on her back, because we did not know if Maddie would continue to breathe, because the numbness was becoming so intense. Let that sink in for a minute. After that, when we went to the MR, I mean to the emergency room the following day because the intensity of the symptoms was coming on so fast. They did that over, you know, that full neuro workup. They did a spinal tap. They did blood work. And everything came back clear. My daughter is falling apart and everything is just fine. What the fuck is going on? I don't know what to do. So we had a lot more symptoms that happened within the next few days, months, I mean. That time frame I just told you, that's May, Memorial Day weekend. Between May and July, Maddie had right arm pain, full body numbness, tingling in all of her extremities, random paralysis. She'd get stuck and couldn't move. She would feel like shards of glass in her hands. There was tremors in her legs. There was vibrations through her whole body. She had headaches, she had blurry vision, she had brain fog. My daughter had photographic memory. She had brain fog so bad that when she was driving home, she couldn't find out which road to turn on, where we lived. She was lost. She no longer could drive. After that, we've got ourselves some nausea, some muscle spasms, fatigue. It would take all of the energy she had to come from her bedroom upstairs, downstairs to the couch. That was a big deal. She lost motor skills, fine motor skills. She could no longer tie her shoes, cut her food. She could no longer button her clothes. She couldn't hold her pencil. And mind you, my child was still trying to study for the MCAT. 
The right side of her body swell up so she couldn't wear jeans anymore because they wouldn't fit her legs. The reflexes, we're back to those reflexes. Reflexes trigger me now. They did reflexes on her knees and her head would flip back like she had whiplash. That's not supposed to happen. You're just supposed to have your knee go out, your leg go out. She had rapid heart rate that would go way up to 215 and then drop to 50. In July, all of the symptoms that I just said escalated. And then we had a new one, chest pain. She thought she was having a heart attack. And I can tell you what came to my mind was, holy shit, that's the one thing I did not want. That was a Friday. We ended up at ER three times in one weekend. We ended up three times because they decided that it wasn't a, cardio a cardiac issue. She had GERD. She had acid reflux. She should take tums. One doctor told us to take at to take Tylenol and ibuprofen, it would be the same as Tylenol with codeine and it would take the pain away. <laughs> F off. We left. The final day that weekend was a Sunday. Maddie was in so much pain, drinking water would put her in the fetal position, crying like a baby. She had been through so much at this point in time and we could find no guidance, no help. We were shut down if we would look for something on the internet. People were being censored left and right. And I still didn't really know the degree of what was going on. Still. How many of you guys out here are parents? Raise your hands. I need to see. That's what I thought. Look around. You saw all those parents, right? We would lay down our life for our children. We would pay any price to save them. I would have sold my soul to save my child because she thought she was dying. She told me that. So here's my 21-year-old child who thinks no one can help her and she is going to die. So I did the only thing I could think of in that moment and I said, hey Maddie, we've been taking videos. I don't need to make a post on my Instagram. I have about four or 5,000 followers. Somebody, somewhere has a nugget of information that can help us, somewhere. And she said, and I quote, hi, I'm Adivan. As long as you don't have spelling errors. <laughs> Always the overachiever, and I guarantee you, I had a lot of spelling errors because I didn't have my glasses on, and I was scared shitless. I was so fucking scared. So the first day, we had about 10,000 hits on that post, most of which said, I hope you die. I hope your daughter dies. It would serve you right for being so stupid. You should be in jail for allowing your child to do that. You're just trying to get attention. Your daughter's making it up. She's an actor. A1, grade A, Oscar performance. Oh my God. But mostly that we should die. Oh my God. The next day, everything changed. Do you guys know how many seconds are in one day? 84,660. We started getting one notification on my Instagram every single second for a week. Do the math. That's millions of people. In that, Maddie met somebody. I have no idea how she managed to make this connection, but she did. It was to a young woman named Sierra who had been injured from an antibiotic and had very similar symptoms to Maddie. And she told Maddie, I, I have this doctor I met and he gave me my life back. That doctor is Dr. Galili. Somehow, I'm not sure how this happened because everything was a blur, Friday, four days after I made that post, we were in Dr. Galili's office. You know what was weird? He was on vacation. He wasn't supposed to be there. It was his birthday. He changed his personal plans to be there for us. Now, mind you, all this time we had doctors who did not listen to us and gaslit the ever-loving daylights out of us. And here's a guy who's coming in on his day off and he listened. He asked questions that meant something and he listened to everything we said. He asked, did you have contrast? Did you have steroids? What was the symptoms? How, what was their order? And then all of a sudden, I don't know how many of you here know who Dr. G is, 
But he has this weird light bulb moment thing that goes on. And he says, I got it, I got it. And he gets super excited. And then he asks me, do you trust me? I have no idea, I only met this man 20 minutes before. And every fiber in my mama bear's soul and body said, I do. I have no idea why I did, but I 100% did. The next thing I know, Mark says, we gotta make a phone call. Sorry, Dr. Galili, I just called you Mark. <laughs> Oops, faux pas, anywho. He says, I gotta make a phone call. And the next thing I know, we're on a FaceTime with Bobby Kennedy. If this day wasn't weird, it just got weirder. <laughs> and Bobby says to my daughter, I am so sorry to meet you this way. And I am so sorry you're going through this. But you are in really good hands. Dr. Marqua, take care of you. We will do everything in our power to make sure you're okay. We lost it. I can't believe I'm not right now. And Bobby said, when you're better, will you help us? I said, yes. Bobby, here I am. This is a lot better than selling my soul. Thank you very much for having me. Here I am. I learned something in all this, but before I tell you what I learned, I gotta tell you something. We started an IV therapy about 10 minutes after that conversation with Bobby. Two hours later, my daughter was able to make a fist, the first fist she'd been able to make since March. By the end of that appointment, she was able to walk and her tremors were nearly gone. We saw hope and we had hope for the first time. And the only people that were in the office that day were myself, Dr. Mark, my daughter, Lori, and the nurse and a few people that came to celebrate his birthday. And we all cried. It was nothing short of a miracle that day. So Mark, thank you. I'm gonna call you my first name, because at this point, holy shit, we're bonded for life, dude. But back to what I learned. I felt alone this whole time, right? We could never find any help, any advice, any information. We couldn't find anything until I made that post. And then I found an entire parallel universe of people from all around the world. We got contacted from, oh my gosh, Saudi Arabia, France, Canada, Africa, Brazil, Venezuela, Every possible corner of this earth contacted Maddie and I, saying, you are so brave for standing up. We can share our story now. Or saying, we are just like you. We thought we were alone. We thought we were the only ones, and they're not. We found out that we all need help. I proposed an idea to CHD to create a forum, to create a place that we can have help for all of us. One single solitary place that all of the injured people can go and get the resources they need, the support they need, and so they can share their stories and be heard. We need to be heard. Our stories are real. The more we can share and the more that we can have that one cohesive place, I believe it's the more help we can get. There is Susan G. Komen if you have breast cancer. Everybody knows who that is. If you're pissed off at drunk drivers, there's that. We all know who that is too, right? So why not make something synonymous with vaccine injuries? We need it. We need it desperately. We needed it a long time ago, but since this all is happening now and we're in the middle of a shit show, this is the time to do it. I want to do this for past, for all of you that suffered before, and I know there are parents that have that issue of kids been suffering for many years. And for myself, the ones that are going on now, and for the future, because it will happen again. We need help. So tonight, you are a part of that initiative to start building that, I don't know what to call it yet, but that safe haven that we need, and that place for resources. I thank you very much for having me tonight. I thank you for being here and being an active part of making change. Thank you for listening to my story. Have a great night.